question 15. So I'm going to start this by just rearranging this here. Let's write things that just might be useful in a minute. So okay, that's OK, isn't it? Um, y equals 9 over x squared. Um, something else that might be useful. What about tan squared y? Well, I might think, well, where's a, why is that going to be useful at the moment? Something else that we're going to need along the line, just to remind you about, is sec squared theta is 1 plus tan squared theta. Okay, and that's going to come into it. All right, I'm just going to write those there. We're going to use those as we go. Right, let's get in and try and differentiate this step. Now, it's implicit differentiation. Okay, so when we do implicit differentiation, what we actually do is just basically just put d over dx in front of everything to start off with. Oops, equals. Now, don't do anything that's quite easy. So that just means differentiate this with respect to x. Okay, so I can do the right hand side. Don't need to think about that. Right. Now, what happens here? Okay, so when we do this. It's just going to be, it's like, it's like product rule, so we're just going to write x squared d over dx tan y, and then plus, and then the same thing for these two things the other way around, okay? And, and again, what we're going to do, let's do the easy stuff, all right, whoops, let me do that, right, because I can differentiate the x squared with no bother at all. So that gives me 2x and tan y, remember the whole thing is equal to 0. Now what happens here, all right, now this is kind of the, the interesting bit. When we do this part, that's going to be, so we're going to get our, our x squared. Now, when you differentiate tan y, you get sec squared x. Remember it's with respect to x, so that's where we write dy over dx. Um, oh, maybe it's got to be plus. Right, take this away from both sides and divide by this. All right, and then we get dy over dx is equal to minus 2x times y and divide by this. Here. All right, x squared and z squared x. Right. Now, you might just see why I've written this stuff here. It's basically, we're just going to sub these bits in, all right? So let's rewrite what we've got here. Now, if you look where we're trying to get to, so they've helped us out a little bit, all right? So let's just write in what we know. So x is 9 over x squared, okay? Oh, sorry, tan, tan y is 9 over x squared. So we're just going to substitute it in. So so I'm just trying to kind of keep things a little bit closer so you can see everything together. So what's it going to be equal? Right, we've got minus, we've got 2x. Now we've got tan y. So I'm just going to substitute it that there. I'm not going to try and do anything with anything yet. I'm just going to take one step at a time. Now, sec squared is 1 plus tan squared. Okay, so that's going to be x squared. And I've got 1 plus tan squared. So let's just substitute that in. There we go. Now, I'm just going to play around with this here a little bit. Well, let's look at the numerator first of all, because that's easier. We're going to have minus 18, and then the axis is going to cancel, isn't it? So that's going to give me minus 18 over x. Right. Now let's think about the denominator. All right, so if we just multiply this out, that gives me x squared plus 81 over x squared. Now, I still need to, I need to do something here, don't we? Well, look, we need to get a common denominator. So if we multiply these, if, if just, just imagine this question here just by itself. We need to multiply this one here, top and bottom, by x squared. So then that gives me, I need to write the whole thing down. So we're going to get minus 18x over, and then we've got, that's going to give me x to the 4 plus 81 over 
over x squared. Now, let's piece it all together because, oops, that's minus 18 over x, wasn't it? Oh, I nearly made a mistake then. Right, so let's piece it all together. Now, just remembering how we divide fractions. So we've got minus 18 over x. Divide by a fraction, so you keep, change, and then you just flip this one around. So we've got x squared over x to the 4 plus 81. And what's that lot equal now? We've got minus 80. Oh, wait a minute, look. That x can cancel with one of those ones. All right. So then that gives us, that gives us min, uh, minus 19x over x to the 4 plus 81, which is hopefully, phew, right, that's what we wanted just there, isn't it? All right. Okay, now let's have a look at part B. Again, I'm just going to try and I'd normally spread my work out a little bit more. Okay, but let's have a look at part B. Now it says prove that C has a point of inflection at x and the fourth root 27. Right, okay, point of inflection. So point of inflection is when this part equals zero, isn't it? So we're going to have to differentiate this again, all right? So let's write, so it's quotient rule, yeah? So u equals minus 18x, d equals x to the 4. So you would need to show this, all right? So just doing quotient rule, that's all it is. So du equals minus 18, and dv equals 4x to the power of 3. Now just piece it all together. So hopefully, no quotient rule. So quotient rule is just v du take away u dv over v squared. All right. So just piece it all together. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So v. So we've got x to the four plus eighty one, and that's going to be multiplied by the minus eighteen. Okay. And then we're going to take away u dv, all right, so minus 18x multiplied by 4x cubed, and then that's all over v squared. Now it looks, it looks absolutely horrid, to be honest, but actually it's not too bad, right, and the reason is, is because we're only really interested in the numerator, okay, because we're interested in when it's equal to zero, and that's what we're actually doing. So, Let's have a little look. Now, obviously, this, this numerator will actually tidy up here. Now, if I just if I multiply this out, um, I'm going to skip a little step here. Right? But if I multiply it out, this top section, numerator, is going to come out to be 54x to the 4 minus 27, OK? Um, plus 81. All right, so if I just multiply that out, tidy it up a little bit. That's what we're going to get. Right, so what are we interested in? We're interested in when this is going to be equal to zero. Okay, when is this part equal to zero? So let's just quickly write this down. 54, we've got x to the 4 minus 27, looks terrible, equals zero. Okay, okay, well, I can divide both sides by 54. Okay, there we go. Now, if I Add 27 to both sides, take the fourth root, so x equals, okay. Now, I need to be a little bit careful because a lot of people stop there, right? And they think that's all they've actually got to do. The question said, prove, okay? So how do we really prove that this is a point of inflection? And remember what you need to show now is you need to show that what about when x is a little bit less than this figure, okay? So if x were less than the fourth root of 27, okay, what would your answer be, all right? So if we, in other words, if we were less than 27, well, the answer would be a negative, wouldn't it? It would end up being less than zero, all right? What about 
if x was more than root to the fourth root 27. Well, if that were the case, so if it was more than 27, okay, then it's going to be a change of sign, isn't it? Okay, and what you're looking for is you're looking for this change of sign with the second derivative. Right? You can look at it with the first derivative and the signs would be the same, but that's going to be a lot more. It's just going to be more fiddly to do. All right? So it'll be much easier. And this is all you need to do. You just need to show and just say, look, that's going to be less than zero. That's going to be more than zero. So because we've got a change of sign, we've got a point of inflection. Right? And lots of people forget about this part at the end. All right, which is a shame. If you've done all the hard work, all right, you've obviously done really well on that.